everybody. I'm Dr. Jesse Jackson III. I'm the best-selling author and facilitator of the Don't Kick Em Out book and training series. And I am the founder of our Elite School Leader Academy, uh, which I'm extremely proud of, uh, that during the course of this year, 2018 to 2019, that 100% uh, every school administrator, be, be it superintendent, school board member, or principal, school principal or central office, 100% of the folks who sat down and came to uh, a multiple of our courses in that program have reported that it has contributed to their professional growth and their professional development. What does that mean? They said that the training that they're receiving is relevant. It is real time to the job we do. One of the biggest complaints or one of the things I see in the game in the business is that a lot of the training that we give does not specifically, particularly for school leaders, does not address what they have to deal with on a day to day basis. We don't deal with uh, the issues of social media, fight problems in school, hitting and aggressive behavior of preschool and adolescence. We don't deal with uh, school safety issues until something goes wrong. Just exercising those drills are not dealing with it. It's not preparedness. We don't deal with what happens when a staff member, uh, we lose a staff member during the school year due to death. I've had that happen eight times this year, you know? Like, there's so many components to workplace administration, school administration, that we have got to get to a point where we are pounding, pounding, pounding relevant professional development, training that impacts the bottom line. I was really pleased the district uh, contacted us uh, last week and, uh, you know, they, they're trying to get on. It's going to be very difficult to get them in, but I'm going to get them in. Why? The superintendent called and the person who she had called for her was very clear that the mandate she gave her assistant superintendent was to find training that will serve as a return on investment. I'm very proud of that. I'm very proud of the fact that our training will 100% of the time serve as a return on what you invest. What does this mean? Think this through. If you have a training issue or you're trying to put a training program in and you're looking and you're planning your 2019, planning your 2020, planning your 2021, we're talking about training that impacts the bottom line. What do you have to base your training on? Now, I hear a lot of people say that we need to use the data. OK, now the data is the lowest form of information. You have data, you have information, then you have knowledge, then you have wisdom. Wisdom is knowing what your people need. Knowledge is, 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 is knowing, it's understanding. Data is simply statistics and facts. And you always start with the facts. You don't move without the facts. But then your leadership requires that you tap into things you can't necessarily see. The vision looking forward, anticipating problems that will be in a company. That's what we've got to coach and train superintendents, principals, school boards to see anticipation of issues before they happen so we are prepared. Everything is not positive. We're spending a lot of energy trying to be friends, trying to be positive, trying to hope for the best possible outcome, and the people who are doing this job every day know for sure that is not reality, and we're getting blindsided, we're getting wore out, we're getting burnt out, we're getting our feelings hurt, people are losing their jobs, ruin their reputation, it ruins culture, it ruins administrative culture. So when you see these 16 signs of a failing or marginal school, this is when you it kind of tips you off that, hey, we need to get in front of this. Maybe it's full-blown broken, or maybe it's something we need to get in front of. What does this mean? So number one, repeated bad hires. You're not good at hiring people. So which means you bring people in the program, you end up firing them or they leave. That is a repeat. That is a problem because you got to ask yourself. I asked one HR person, how much did, did it cost you to hire those 31 people last year? And we only retained 14. That process is a six, di six, six digit pro uh, cost. But here it is, a year later, people are leaving. It's not working out. We're asking them to leave or they're leaving. That means something's wrong. That means that we've got that. You can't just see this is what happens. People say, well, it's just like that. Well, we don't pay a lot. We, we, we have this problem. Well, it's just nothing we can do. That is not leadership. That is somebody who's seeking excuses and doesn't want to do something. It doesn't work. If I know that's happening, let me get in front of it. Now, people will always say, listen, people need their money. People want their money. 
But I, I have found that 8.5 out of 10 of the people I have touched in my over 500,000 people touch sample, they leave for reasons outside of pay. Okay, so 1.5 out of 10 are leaving for cash straight up. But the others are leaving for other reasons. And it is our job to figure that out and get in front of it. Number two, failing to fire toxic people or people who don't work. So you'll keep someone who doesn't work and let them toxic new people, uh, let them ruin new people. So you bring in these new recruits, spend all that energy, all that time, the orientation, training them, the, the hundreds of thousands of dollars in training costs. We do that, but we let the toxic people ruin them. And so now we have more of the behavior we don't need and don't want that kills the company. Yeah, number three, we change models every one to two years. We haven't decided yet what works. So here it is. We're, we're running a company, but we don't know what works. And we're freestyling and making it up as we go along. You have to understand this. I am always leery of an organization that goes to a conference and comes back with a new model. I've always said that best practices do not travel because best practices are based on best people. So what they're doing in Brooklyn is not necessarily going to work for you. It can work for you in theory, but the part you're overlooking about what a guy like Jeff Canada did was the energy he put into the people, the culture, the people investment. So just doing what Jeff did doesn't transfer for you. That's why if you're trying to do these best practice theology, you better make sure that you make the investment in the people, growth and development, or you will be one of those districts that have a revolving door. 15 new initiatives going on. I mean, you got the secondary people doing something and the uh, elementary people got something going on and pre-Ks running their own program. Then the alternative people are doing something different. And then we've got central office has a total uh, new initiative. And what do you, what do you have? Failure. I've seen companies so disjointed where uh, behaviors are number one issue. Their suspensions are are in the top three in their state. Yet and yet and still, yet and still, yet and, yet and still, they are looking for the easiest model to do, not the one that actually solves their problem. The hitting and physical aggression of the young children is out of control. But yet and still, we're looking for something uh, that that's socially acceptable and peaceful. That, that, that the, the management's mind can conceive, but 100% of everybody that was doing the work, they kept saying, this is not working. This is not going to help us with the kid. Why are we not in Dr. Jackson's training program like the rest of the district? Why have you got us this cookie cutter model and approach with these kids? But they're over there, got the high school over there and junior high over there. They're with Dr. Jackson talking the real deal and what to do. That, that happened to me this year. It's not about me. I answer. I solve problems. I solve problems. People call me. They want answers. And guess what? Every answer isn't really touchy feely. It's not such a great feeling. However, it is an answer and I get paid to be right. I get paid not for opinion. I have to know what I'm talking about and I have to know what has to be done. If we don't, we lose. I'm about return on investment. If you call me, you're going to get your money back times three. That's a that's a Jackson guarantee. It's the way it is. But you find those companies that move around. They change models every one to two years. That's telling you they don't know what they're doing. They don't know their population or they're unwilling to do what needs to be done. They go for the popular light route. They're, they've got 18 people sitting around the table trying to get buy in. No, leaders have to know what to do and push it. I've got to know what's going to work. I got to know the needs of my people. I got to know the needs and talent base of my staff. And I got to bring those two together and always remember results are the name of the game. It has to be relevant, relevant to the people who do the job. Poor people management skills. The people can't get along. High behavior referrals or suspensions. The staff doesn't come to work. The kids don't come to school. Frequent student physical aggression, right? So you have a problem. You know, so typically this is in the lower school or in the high school. So the high school is a fight club. And then the lower school is a lot of hitting going on. So we're talking uh, the K-4, a lot of that going on. 
So when you see that there, we've got a problem. That has to be addressed. We just don't say, hey, let's keep going. Hey, no, 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 to suspend or not suspend. Let's address it. Number nine, low test scores. Lacking academic focus, no vision, don't know where we're going. Everybody is, is not in understanding of where we're going as a company, where we're going as a building. Currently devaluing or underappreciating uh, the personnel. So that's subjective. It depends on how the people feel. Poor communication, meaning company, we don't communicate ideas to the people who need to hear them. Email is not a proven effective way of communication when you're passing major ideas. I hate to hear a leader say, check your email. Did you read your email? We still pe we still have people that really desire one-on-one -on -one communication to be told and to hear. Now, we do understand you do send emails. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about that's your primary source of communication. That doesn't work. You got to talk to people. There's no way around it. There's too many ways to talk to people. Now, there are people who do have to check their email, but you got to understand, me as the communicator, I've got to set this up so you get it. No excuse. That's something, we got to sit down and get, gain clarity on that. Because in a cabinet, we still have, I've heard in the cabinet with a superintendent and his, his, his cabinet there, I have heard, did you check your email? That, and it is eight people in the room. So it's not about, oh, I can't go talk to 400 people. You can't even talk to eight. So it's you. See, that's what we're talking about. Number 14, disconnected from the needs of the students, the parents, and staff. Organizational division. Passive leadership, meaning they won't make a tough call. Nobody wants to have the final say. They want to leave it to the group's theory and votes. It's not leadership. I got to know. First of all, I'm going to listen. I decide. And I'm not going to be swayed. Leaders have to have vision. Or you end up being a manager. You're looking for a group approval. Everybody raise your hand if you think we should do this. And raise your hand if you we should stick with PBS, PBIS. Raise your hand if you want to do restorative practices. Raise your hand if you want to go with Dr. Jackson. Don't kick him out. And then you got 30, 30, 30. Okay, well, you could do what you think is right. You could do what you think is right. And y'all could do what y'all think is right. And let's just move forward like that. Company going in three different directions on the same thing. And then you get, then when one group gets some production, then you get upset. So I've lived it. I'm just quoting you something I've lived. It is not whether uh, PBIS works. It absolutely works. It is sound research. It's not, it's not a question where restorative practices work. It absolutely works. It is sound research. The thing is, you have to know your population because my population's going to tell me the best approach to get the outcome I want. That's why you got to know your people. You got to know the community you're in. You got to know where you're at, man. And see, like it's my job to know the communities I go to, not just come in here and like, oh, you know, the big national guy's here and he's going to tell us what's going on around the world. I take a lot of time. I am highly prepared in studying the communities I go to, connecting with people on the ground in the communities I go to, to know what's happening. Many of the places that I go, I've already been. I know someone there already. I'm, I'm entrenched. And that gives you an advantage because if you don't know who you're trying to help, how can you create a philosophy that creates a disconnect? And so until we have understanding on these issues, we will continue to lose. I hope you take these things to heart and you base your PD on relevancy of the issues we have until you can use your training time to address the issues you have. You will continue to have the problems you have. Dr. Jackson here. Hope you're listening. Hope you're sharing as always. If you know I can help you, please give me a call. I want to train your staff. I guarantee you, you'll get production. Dr. Jackson here. I'll see you next time.